Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. Tonight we're going to be going over view objects and the Java classes that you can use with them. I have my employee VO over here and if we double click on it we get to the property of it and we scroll over here. If you look there's a tab for Java. And you can set the Java classes by pressing this into uh, this pencil here. For now, we're going to limit ourselves to this, the employee VO impl, and we'll do a row class later. You get this interface and then you can click this and you can actually view it. So this is the default constructor. You do not want to remove it. But you can put classes in here. Now, what is a view object impl? Well, the view object impl actually refers to the view object and not a particular role. The other one that we looked at and I actually will return back to here, refers to each row in the database, really. And you have to remember that the view object and the entity or object represent a row, and a table would be a group of these objects. So we can look at this and do view object impl made you know kind of the umbrella type of um, activities with this okay I have a very simple class here and I'm simply going to type this and I frankly we can just go over this because this is quite helpful um, you can see that these things that are crossed out are no longer supported or depreciated but um, there's quite a long list of them, and if you go to the Java doc, you can actually find out much more about it. But um, here, for example, is a um, build, build where class. Um, clear, create. Now, I'm not going to go into each one of these, but you can see that there are quite a few, and um, some of them will be here, execute query. This one, for example, will just refresh the query. Um, create row. And these are all things that you'll learn as you develop your skills in this. So there's, I don't know how many there are, but there's a ton. So I'll actually copy a few in of these that we can look at. Okay, got several here. This one is just returns the record count. This one clears the view criteria, and you can see that it um, applies a null one and then it re executes it and then it returns the record count that is here. This one is a programmatic way to search on a number of strings. And um, I basically um, set it so that if the search value that you're searching on is null, somebody hasn't entered anything in, into the text box, it'll just clear the screen and it'll show all of the records. This is just for debugging. I'm creating a view criteria here. And I'm setting the upper columns to upper. And that's mainly just because um, in the database, it might be upper, but uh, depends. Here, we're doing a, uh, again, setting the create, creating three different possible criteria. And these are the attributes that I'm using, and then I'm adding them. And now I'm executing the query and returning the get record count, which um, returns the number of records that have found this name. So I've got three 
um, methods here that I will now make available on the employee VO. I go over to the Java and I set the client interface and here they all are and I'm just going to bring them all over. I press OK, press save, refresh my data control and now you can see that when I come in here, here they are. Isn't that amazing? Okay. I have a JSF page, and up at the top, what we're going to do is set some of the criteria that we had. And at the bottom, we're going to do an actual search on the data. And I'm just going to drag, I'll drag it over as a table just so that we can see all the returned rows. And I'm going to get rid of all of these guys. Okay, and we'll do a single row. We won't do anything else. Save that. Click on the table. In the structure window, you can see now I have the table here. And 80% on that. OK, now we're going to go back to the application navigator and to the data control. And the first one that I want to do is clear view. And I'm just going to drag it over as a button. Now I might want to actually now, and this, this is the case where you might want to actually show the structure window and the application navigator on the same one. But um, this I'm going to say get record count. And um, I don't really think I need that, but what I do need is the string return value. And we'll put that there just for that. Now, this is going to be the set program. Uh, programmatically, and this one will choose an ADF parameter form. And we're going to have one input text and a button. Okay, so let's set this and see how we go. Let's start running it. Okay, now you can see the, um, the screen here. And um, let's do a search on BE, BER. Let's see how many we get. So, um, in this case, you have to remember that we're searching all three of these fields, which I kind of like. We only have one one input text, and uh, we can search as much as we want. I guess there's not a lot of BRs in the group. There we go. Um, we get the get record count, and that is returning. Now, I do believe that the set programming programmatically also has a get record time return. So probably need to grab this return, which is more likely the oh, no, let's just do a separate one. That was going to bind the existing one, but I'm I'm gonna do a separate one. And we'll do a text input text there. So we've got two. This is the return of the set programmatically. And if we can actually put it in the same screen there. Okay. And just for giggles, let's um, go to the structure window. And oh, that's a form layout. Oh, that'll, that'll be all right, I guess. So I kind of like group layout. Okay. We've got our search here. And um, you can see that EF has no records to it. And I did this K. Of course, that was a typo. I'm going to do King, and we'll get a few here. And you can see that we're getting the seven records. If we clear the view criteria, it goes back to the original records. And the get record count, well, there it is versus this one. So we do need to um, work on getting these two to sync properly, but that, that can be done later. I hope this was helpful, and have a good evening.